Hey there, it's Dr. Kamisa. Welcome back to our video series. And today we're going to be talking about the shoulder, rotator cuff problems. So stay tuned, I got lots to share. If you're new to our channel, please hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications, share us with your friends. Stay tuned, I got lots to share. When we're Assessing a rotator cuff shoulder problem for someone, there's lots, to go, there's lots of factors that go into it to determine what is the appropriate care for your condition, because there's no two shoulders the same. And so the first thing is doing some diagnostics. And diagnostics could entail x-rays, MRI, and ultrasound. MRI is not always done. If the, if the tissue or the history or what we see on the ultrasound or from the exam is questionable, then yes, we wanna, we'll, we'll go further and look for the MRI. But typically, um, that's gonna be the last resort. Typically with the exam, the x-rays and the ultrasound, we can really hone in and see exactly what's going on with the tissue. Now, when it comes to the x-rays, we will take an x-ray of the shoulder. We'll look at the, the, the condition of the shoulder joint itself. But one thing that I always talk about is the supporting structure. And so when you look at the shoulder, we have to think about the neck because the neck houses the power supply. Those nerves coming out of the neck here are the nerves that actually control all the function of the shoulder. And nine times out of 10, the stuff we're seeing is usually chronic in nature. And so we want to make sure that when we're doing the diagnostics, we always look to the neck to make sure that those, if we're going to rehab the shoulder, we want to make sure that there's full power supply, full nerve supply coming to that shoulder area. When we're going to look at the ultrasound, and you can see the ultrasound beside us here, and when we do the ultrasound, I love the ultrasound because it's real time. This is a high def, I did a video on this. Um, it's a high def unit that allows us that if I'm gonna put this on my bicipital tendon or my subscapularis or my rotator cuff, one of the rotator cuffs, I can see in, see in real time how that shoulder is moving or if I, if I have an impingement, I can actually see the impingement. So this is a must, and you're going to see on here, uh, this picture on here, which is a right supraspinatus, which is nine times out of ten, it's the, 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 the big rotator cuff in the front muscle there. And, but you're going to see how we diagnose this. We can actually measure the thickness of the, of the tendon itself. We can look if there's bursitis in there. We can see if there's tears, what kind of tear, how big the tear is. This is a must. This is absolutely a must. And if it needs injections, well, this is how we do the injections as well. So let's talk about now if after we've done the assessment, after we've looked at the x-rays, after we've looked at the ultrasound and maybe an MRI, then we've got to determine, does the shoulder injury need some kind of injection? Does it need prolotherapy? Does it need PRP? Or is it really needs the army to come in, which would be the stem cell injection. Does it need any one of those three? And so we want to fully assess and look at those conditions. And I've done some videos before. I'll put the links down below on who's a candidate for PRP, who's a candidate for prolotherapy. But we have done shoulders with all three of those types of injections, prolo, PRP, and stem cells, and it really depends on, on the severity of the injury, it depends on the chronicity, how long it's been around, uh, the, if there's a lot of damage, if there's a lot of degenerative changes, if there's a lot of supporting structure that needs to be addressed. So the injections itself will be determined by those different parameters that we looked at from the anatomy, the ultrasound, the MRI, and the x-rays. So now let's take a look at the rehab. We're going to assume that the, the patient got some kind of 
cellular injection, whether it's prolotherapy, PRP, or stem cell. And then the rehab starts because just injecting the tissue does not fully heal the tissue. You have to restore the biomechanics. You have to re, uh, rebalance so the shoulder works properly. You've got muscles that have been atrophied. You've got muscles that have been overworked. You need to train those muscles. And so now, right behind me now, and you've seen a video on uh, Shockwave. We did a shot, and I'll put that link down below. But now, we have a new guy, and this is our Focus Shockwave. And I will do a separate video on the technology on this. It's pretty amazing. But now I'm going to show you some video clips on how we actually treat all those areas I went through on the anatomy. We're going to treat either with the focus unit or, well, wow, dual guns here. We're going to treat them with either the focus or the radio. Both of these are going to be required to get a full rehab of the shoulder. And by like this, this technology, the combination of these is absolutely top level for shoulder recovery. You're going to see on the screen here some anatomy pictures, but this is how we do our exam. And the, we're going to start first by looking at the biceps uh, muscle, the tendons of the bicep. And in this first picture, you're going to see circled here the the biceps, the biceps, meaning by two, has a long head and a short head. And so what you're looking at here with the red is the area of the bicipital tendon. And in the black dashed area, that's where the tendon sheath is. And so if there's tendonitis in there, we'll be able to see that. Here is the other tendon for the biceps. And this is the short head, which attach, you can see where the circle is, the red circle. And this attaches to the corkoid process. And this is a very complex area because there's lots of different muscles that are attached to this area. And I'm going to show you those. Here we have the pectoral minor. And you can see where the red circle is. This is also attaching to that corkoid process. And so now we have both the short head of the biceps and the pec minor attaching to here. In this picture, you see the corcord brachialis. And you'll see the two red areas here. And this muscle uh, is instrumental in allowing the shoulder to move properly. And so where the red circle is up here at the top, now we have three different muscles that are attaching to there. And the bottom circle is actually in the, uh, on your arm. Uh, just below where the deltoid inserts. And so this muscle is critical for, a, for part of the rehab. And looking at the supporting structure, this is some of the critical muscle tissue that needs to be addressed. Here we have the subscapularis. And the subscapularis uh, is the first muscle in the front of your arm. So when you externally rotate, and you'll commonly do these types of exercises where you're internally and externally rotating your shoulder. But this is the first area, one of the areas um, that gets injured. The supraspinatus is the most injured muscle tissue of the rotator cuffs. And you can see here where the circle is. And that's where 90% of the tears occur in this area here. And I'm going to show you when someone has a shoulder impingement, when they can't lift their arm up or they, they can't reach the cabinet or they can't comb their hair, they can't brush their hair, they can't raise their arm above their head, it's going to be this, this area that is dramatically, that has been injured. When someone has what is called a shoulder impingement, you've heard, maybe you've heard that term before, shoulder impingement, but the shoulder impingement, as you see on the diagram and the picture here, where the arrow is, there is a space between part of the scapular bone called the acromion process, and that's the supraspinatus there. 
And when that tendon becomes swollen, that space becomes jammed up and you can't get that tendon to move smoothly through that small little space. And so it, you have pain and discomfort when you go to move your arm. But that's the space that takes place or that's the space where that tendon has to move in. And that is another indication that there's been chronic severe damage going on. Infraspinatus is the largest of the rotator cuffs on the back of the arm. And you can see here circled in red here, this is the area where the tears would occur. This is the teres minor muscle. And as you can see, it's a very small muscle. It's not usually involved in a rotator cuff. It can be if it's more traumatic, more severe, but um, Right where the circle is, that's where the treatment area would be, where the tendon attaches to the bone tissue of the humerus. When someone has a shoulder problem with the rotator cuffs, one of the areas that gets overcompensated is the deltoid, or the big shoulder muscle. And you're gonna see here, I have a couple different views of it here, but you're gonna see here where the circle is and where the two arrows are on the left and the right, you're gonna see those areas become extremely tender when we do treatment and injections. So again, another supporting structure. This muscle referred to sometimes as the trap muscle, trapezius muscles. There's two portions to it here that attach to uh, part of the scapula, and, but it also attaches to the neck. And that is why we want to incorporate looking at the neck as part of treating the shoulder, not always, but in more complex cases because this muscle can affect the shoulder but also affects the neck because it's attached to the neck and to the spine and it moves the shoulder blade but also moves the neck. So this muscle has double function. Levator scapulae is a very powerful muscle. There's a lot going on with this muscle. As you can see here, it attaches up into the neck area. It attaches to the corner of the shoulder blade here. This is involved in another reason why we check the neck for shoulder problems. Again, supporting structure. And if you get anything from this, what I'm going through here is that it's just not in the front where the pain is. There's a mechanical problem that's going on and we have to assess the, me the mechanics at all around that shoulder blade to make sure that if we're gonna treat the actual injury, that the shoulder can actually work better in the long run because it's just treating the injury itself and, and ignoring everything else the, the injury is going to come right back. We have to rebalance everything else. The next two muscles you're going to see here are the rhomboid muscles and the rhomboid major and the rhomboid minor. The minor one's at the top there. And you'll see where the circles are. And these are very tender trigger points. These are very tender areas. When we treat these, when we inject these, these are very because there's a lot of tension in here. When there's an injury to the rotator cuff, these muscles lock down to protect the shoulder from moving. So these are, again, treating the supporting structure. You're gonna see some video clips as they roll through, as we treat different points of the shoulder with Dr. Pam and one of our patients, Tom. And you're gonna see how the shock wave is used for and we do a combination of both of those. I'll explain, like I said earlier, I'll explain the difference between the two, but we use a combination of both the focus and the radio for different points. So you're just gonna see some video clips play through here. They're very short video clips, but I just wanna show you all the different points that match with the anatomy that I showed you earlier. Those are all the points that we hit with the shock weights.
So now if we look at the condition, we've assessed it, we've done some kind of injection potentially, or sometimes it may not require an injection, but we're doing the shockwave therapy. The protocol for the shockwave is once a week for six weeks. We reassess, we can take a look at the structure afterwards with the ultrasound here. Um, but we're also gonna do rehab here as well and also get you to do rehab at home. So we will be doing all that anatomy I showed you, all the supporting structure needs to be addressed. It absolutely needs to be addressed to get the full picture, full rehab of the entire supporting structure to rebalance and get that shoulder, get, take the pressure off the rotator cuffs so they can function better and heal to their ability. I wanna show you a picture here of one of our patients, Tom, who was so gracious to help us with the videos, and Dr. Pam. And Tom had come in with some chronic shoulder uh, issues. We did some cellular injections with him. We, uh, and uh, we have done shockwave with him, both the radial and the focus. And if you just take a look at this picture, uh, it's worth a thousand words. Take a look at this. So when we're dealing with the shoulder, the shoulder can be very complex. It can be very involved, lots of supporting structure. We have to find the appropriate therapy for the appropriate condition, because no two shoulders are the same. And in this particular case, when we look at Tom's picture there, it tells the story of success. It tells the story of, that's what we're about, is empowering people to do what they want to do, living the best day every day, and when your hands are up like this, riding a couple of dolphins, I'd say that's a great day. So until next time, have a blessed day.